About 25% of ocean's fish depend on healthy coral reefs for food and reproduction. This is according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Although coral reefs makes up less than 1% of the ocean flow, they are home to a quarter of marine species. Fishes and other organisms find shelter, food, reproduce, rear their young, and hide from predators in the many crevices, branching overhangs, and ledges formed by corals. Additionally, coral reef structures shields, coastal shorelines against 97% of the energy from waves, storms, and floods, helping prevent loss of life, property damage, and erosion. When reefs are damaged or destroyed, the absence of this natural barrier can increase the damage to coastal communities from normal wave action and violent storms. However, these reef structures located in shallow waters close to the coastal developments has declined by half since the 1950s globally due to negative human impact such as pollution, climate change, unsustainable fishing methods such as the use of explosives and the use of unsustainable fishing methods like the use of seine nets which catches juveniles. How does pollution such as emptying raw untreated sewerage water into the ocean impact the corals often located about a kilometer away from the shoreline? That sewage water, it has a lot of uh, nutrients call it nitrates, call it phosphate. Now, when they get into the water, yeah, you can say it, there is that dilution effect. But if the dumping of that sewage is continuous throughout the year, day and night, you will agree with me, at one point in time, it will reach where the corals cannot survive because they are getting a lot of unwanted uh, nutrients. Actually, if there is a lot of nitrates, there is a proliferation of uh, algae, algae which competes with corals. So if you are promoting algae, then of course you are killing corals because they cannot uh, outspace, uh, outcompete. And that's why you find most reefs that are very close to uh, municipal uh, disposal uh, areas, you will find that area is either a rocky reef because it used to have corals but they died because of that kind of issue. Whereas if you go away to other areas that do not have this dumping, you will find the near shore corals that they are very healthy. In 1997-1998, El Nino rains resulted in a massive coral bleaching globally. Maura says coral cover on almost all Kenyan coral reefs studied had declined to around 10% after the bleaching event. Corals require a clean, shallow environment and warm waters of around 26 degrees to grow, but floods bring with it sediments, causing cloudy waters, reducing the amount of light reaching the corals, leading to bleaching. Clean means with a, no nutrients. Or if there is a nutrient, then it's, there is a level that corals reefs normally survive. Shallow in the sense that corals, they do photosynthesis. They have an algae inside them. That algae normally helps coral photosynthesize food. So that means this coral, for it to survive, it has to be in shallow environment. Maximum, it can go up to 10 meters or 12 meters. If you find corals beyond 25 meters, those are called deep corals. They don't necessarily do photosynthesis. Sediment happens actually when there's a lot of rainfall, flooding, and it carries a lot of sediments from upcountry, especially during the El Nino or other floods. Sediments come and cover the corals. Of course, if, if, you have if you are covered by sun or sediments, what happens? You don't breathe, you don't eat. In one week's time, you're dead. But climate change and pollution are not the only human-related stress impacting the coral reef system in Kenya. In Pate Island, the largest island in the Lamu archipelago north of Mombasa, lying between the towns of Lamu and Kiunga, unsustainable fishing practices, port development and pollution have seen the corals here degrade over the years. The Pate Kiunga coral reef system supports more than 3,000 people in 600 households, directly or indirectly, through artisanal fisheries and tourism. 40 year old mother of five, Amina Ahmed from Shanga Ishakana village in Pate Island, is one of them. 
as a little girl, her mother, whom she learned octopus fishing from, never needed a boat or sophisticated fishing gear to go fishing. During low tides, Amina, her mother, and other women would walk to catch fish and octopus, which were plentiful in shallow waters. To catch and carry the fish and the octopus home, one simply needed a stick and a basket. But over the years of degraded coral reef system along the Patakunga area saw the fisheries disappear, heavily impacting the life, especially among women. Ilikuwa imeharibiwa sana kwa sababu vuvi haramu. Vuvi haramu ambapo kwamba itatukwa matumbawe, samaki wadogo, kila kitu. Samaki wakipungua na matumbawe yakiwa hakuna, tayari samaki upungua. Chakula cha samaki kikipungua samaki itakuwa hakuna. Samaki waenda mbali, kuweza waenda mbali. Hasa mvuvi akija hapa kwa bahari, akiwa hawezi, hawezi kupata samaki kwa wingi, tayari maisha ambapo kwamba kwa magumu. Akirudi nyumbani tayari watoto wanalia lakini hakuna pesa ambapo kwamba ameipata. Iliharibika mpaka kiasi watu wamekuwa wingi lakini hakuna samaki ambapo kwamba hupatikana. Hasa ile kuharibika tayari maisha pia wa akudumu. Sasa mama anapata shida kwa sababu mtoto atakonda shule lakini hana pesa za kumpa kwenda kwenda shule. Mtoto atakacha chakula lakini chakula hakuna. Mzee amekuja ametoka bahari pia hana hao samaki ambapo kwamba wamepata. Pengine ni kidogo wapiku ni chakula tule tuangalie maisha. Pia nyumba zilikuwa hatuna nyumba za kukaa nzuri kwa sababu maisha likuwa kidogo ya ko duni. Mava yani vazi pia nguo pia tunashinda ku, ku mudumia ule mtoto kila ukikaa watoto wa wengi hasa hiyo maisha inakushinda tayari uko na mzee tayari una vita na mzee tayari una mtoto wako una vita kwa sababu uwezi kumpeka mtoto shule mtoto ataka kusoma lakini uwezi kumpeka mtoto shule in 2021 Kenya launched the Lamu Port a mega infrastructure project that is part of 23 billion US dollar Lamu Port South Sudan Ethiopia transport corridor all upset an ambitious transport corridor between Lamu South Sudan and Ethiopia the port was built by the China Communications Construction Company To provide ships with easy access to the port, the Lamu Port at Mada Bay, a cornerstone of the Kenyan Vision 2030 development plan, requires a deep and sheltered bay and a wide channel. When complete, the port will have 32 400-meter long berths along a 6-kilometer coastline. According to the Lapset Development Authority, the construction of the 1.2-kilometer first three berths is already complete, with but one currently operating and offering cargo transshipment. To create these birds in a container terminal, the seabed had to be dredged up to 18 meters. How did the seabed dredge impact fisheries? Lapseti ikiingia ikaanza matumbaa kuharibika, pia samaki kukimbia, pia kuweza kukimbia kwa sababu ile hewa ambayo kwamba iko imetoka kwa lapseti kufukuliwa mchanga kwa mavumbi mavumbi kuingia kwenye nyumba za samaki au nyumba za kweza ndio iliharibu. But with an environmental impact assessment done before the project implementation, why was there such impact on the coral reef system? When there is that idea of bringing such large scale development, there has to be that uh, approach of doing the things right. And that's how we go wrong. The environmental impact was done The recommendations were made but during the implementation things to my understanding they did not follow the kind of mitigations that they were supposed to have done, to have done. because during large scale the dredging of the ocean they were supposed to have done it during low wind condition as there is no a lot of winds pushing a lot of water and that's spreading the sediments too far to maybe even coral reef areas. It should have been done in a very dry, calm conditions. Then there could have been a very little impact in terms of sediment uh, flow. So conservation, yes, of coral reefs, large scale development activity, they are all wanting, but the problem is doing it at the right way is a big issue we have.
With the coral reef degraded, the communities at Pate Island struggled to earn a decent living. In the interest of understanding what was affecting their livelihood, the community via the Pate Marine Community Conservancy, PMCC, the Northern Rangeland Trust, NRT Coast, and the Nature Conservancy, TNC, came together in 2012. The community and the partners started with Fish Catch Data Service. <laughs> tukiona kiwango cha samaki kinaelekea kushuka ikabidi sasa tukae chini na wale donors wetu watusaidie ni njia gani tutajua hao samaki wanaelekea kushuka kupitia wale donors wetu wakatuletea wana science wana science wakajaribu kusema tufanye kushikanisha coral survey benthic pamoja na fish survey tuliposhikanisha hizo survey tatu ndio tuliweza kujua kitu ambacho kinasababisha samaki wapungue ni coral zimekufa nyumba za samaki zimekufa ndo samaki wamehama hakuna samaki sasa tukaona njia ya kufanya ni gani ndo wana science wakatusaidia ili tu njia ya kufanya ni ku, kupanda corals kwa wingi it's 2019 and the scientists have advised on coral reef restoration three villages pate shangai shakani and shangarubu combining three beach management units would form a locally managed marine area lmma Now, an LMMA is an area set aside by communities and protected as a fish replenishment area. Here, fishing is permanently prohibited. Why are these LMMA areas important? For the communities in Lamu, for example, they do not have the capacity to go uh, offshore, like very deep in the ocean to exploit the, the resources that are there. So you find that most of the fishing is done inshore, uh, within the lagoons, close to the communities Lamu being um, an archipelago it has small islands that are close together between the islands is where you find uh, shallow waters that the fishers uh, now uh, depend on this is where these uh, locally managed uh, marine areas are so now they're much more easily accessible uh, pretty much throughout the year The community where the PMCC together with NRT Coast, the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute Kemfrey, TNC, Kenya Wildlife Services, Kenya Forest Services and the Lamu County Fisheries Department launched the Artificial Coral Reef Restoration Project. The goal of this pilot project was to restore at least 0.5 hectares of coral reef areas within the LMMA, enhance fisheries and safeguard the marine habitats. The restoration project started with engaging, consulting and sensitizing communities on the importance of the coral reefs to their livelihood as well as how these communities were also influencing the coral reef system and other natural impacts such as climate change. Later in 2021, the community trained on coral restoration and together with their partners, they built artificial structures that mimic the natural coral reef system and started transplanting coral reefs on them. Fatumia blocks alafu hizo blocks tunapanda hizo coral kwa cement ndogo ndogo kama inchi moja ama inchi mbili na pia tulifanya tree nursery ambao tree nursery tulifanya piping ambayo imekaa kama mti alafu hizo coral tunazifunga zikiwa zinaninginia ingine tulitumia table nursery ambao table nursery tulifanya wire mesh kama meza vile alafu coral tukapanda juu ya hiyo meza na nyingine tulienda kwa zile coral kubwa kubwa ambazo tayari zishamea sasa tutataka kuweka tofauti tofauti ya coral zikuwe zimemea eh, species tofauti tofauti tukao tunapanda juu ya hizo corals direct ambao tunaita direct plant na katika hizo nne zote ambazo tuli, tuliweza kujaribu tuliona moja kidogo ilifeli kwa sababu kulingana na bahari yetu ni chumvi ile ya uh, wire mesh ili rust na kurust coral ilikuwa zimeanza kufanya vizuri lakini ile kurasti meza ikabidi ivunjike. Sasa tukaona hiyo ni mradi ambao haukuweza kufaulu. Lakini hizo nyingine zote zinaendelea vizuri. The coral fragments collected from a healthy coral reef are attached to the artificial blocks using either zip ties or cement. The blocks are made of cement, sand and ballast and reinforced with iron bars. Can the plastic zip ties used in nurseries and the cement used to construct the artificial reef structures harm the marine ecosystem over time? We've uh, done our research with the help of our uh, Uh, research partners and we've uh, established that the materials that we're using are not really harmful to the marine life if you have a piece of concrete in the water then it stays there for a very long time without being uh, eroded 
it doesn't change the chemical quality of the water. Even if it does, then it's on a very, very small scale, which is negligible. PVC, we know it's plastic. So these are nurseries, and, and nurseries are not um, permanent establishments. So once the nurseries have played their role, which is basically to uh, grow fragments, once we've transferred everything to the restoration site and the artificial reef structures, then we, we will not need the, the, the nurseries. The main essence of the nurseries at the moment is that we don't have to go to the donor site every time because now if you keep going back to the same site to get fragments, that means you leave it degraded. But with a project time frame of a few years and transplanting coral fragments that are very, very slow to grow and the project aimed at achieving coral cover within the short period, how does this project ensure it doesn't compromise on other coral species that might be hard to grow but existed on this ecosystem before? We don't uh, disregard the other species. The nursery type that we're using, the design, accommodates branching corals better because the others uh, mostly we just do direct planting. We just take them from the donor site and then we put them on the artificial restructures without putting them on the nursery. Because uh, most, of, most of the non-branching uh, species are more resilient to uh, changes. So the reason we put these corals at the nursery is for them to adapt. Because sometimes if we just bring them from the mother uh, colony and just put them somewhere else without trying to uh, take care of them, then most of the time they die. They bleach due to too much pressure, changes and stress. Not all replanted fragments would survive while transplanted from the nurseries to the blocks. Some would be eaten by fish such as the parrotfish which nibs on the corals. Therefore, communities conduct regular monitoring and maintenance weekly for the first six months. But once the fragments successfully attach to the artificial blocks, it's reduced to once or two weeks. After a year, it scales down to quarterly. Now, during monitoring, they clean the blocks and corals off the algae. This decreases the competition for the coral fragments enabling them to grow. They also monitor and record their growth. While conducting this exercise, a diver ensures that the 12-liter diving tank is tightly fixed before any dive. The air is tested to ensure it is clean and that the pressure is okay. Also, each scuba gear has an alternative air source just in case a diver or his buddies breathing gear malfunctions while underwater. Now, the navigator is critical as the diver needs to understand the direction he's going as he navigates the depth of the ocean. The depth and pressure gauge shows the diver how far they are as well as the amount of air they have. Now, the divers here at Pate Island dives at a depth of about six to seven meters. Hence, it is critical that every dive, a body check is conducted before a dive. What is the status now? Tulianza na coral almost yani kama around one to two centimeter, but say then we have corals that more than 20 centimeters, or more than 15 centimeters. Now, before pia to put a bear, I'm going to have to have a little bit of a bear. I'm going to have a little bit of a bear. But now, if you have a bear, and 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 you have a bear, you have a bear, and you have a bear, and you have a bear. Sunny and three other community rangers from the three villages are employed to guard and enforce the LMMA laws communities have put in place. Kuna sehemu ya pweza, kuna na sehemu ya samaki, ya kulea samaki. Pando wa pweza, tulika mikakati, pweza tutakotu kuwa fungia kwa mda wa mezi minine mitatu, alafu sasa tunafungua kama one week ama five days ili community iweze kufaidika kutokana na wale pweza ambao tumewalea. Kwa sababu pweza ni mnyama ambao anakaa mali pamoja kwa muda mrefu. Then mbali na kukaa kwa muda mrefu, pweza akona maisha mafupi sana. Kwa sababu pweza akishakuzaa anajikula mwenyewe ama anakufa. Ndio maana tuka, tukafunga kwa muda mchache sana, muda wa miezi minne. Kwa sababu muda wa miezi minne pweza ukija kuzaana mvuvi akija ule kabla hajakufa anampata kabla hajakufa ule mama ndo ana anamvua. Alafu pia kuna sizes ambao haturuhusu mtu avue. Pweza ambao ni chini ya nusu kilo sisi haturuhusu mtu avue kabisa. Kwa sababu huyo sasa anaelekea kwenye kuzaa. Sasa ukimtoa huyo mdogo bado ni juvelin 
kesho kesho utapata kile kizazi kimeisha kabisa ile sehemu ya samaki haivuliwi kabisa kitu ambayo imesababisha tusiruhusu kuvuliwa ni kwamba hii maeneo ni maeneo ambayo wametulia na samaki anapenda kuzaa maeneo ambayo yametulia sasa tukisema wavuvi wavue ovyo ovyo wale samaki hawataweza kuzaa mayai yatakuwa yameharibika yataharibiwa na wavuvi kwa sababu ile mitego ambayo wanatumia wanaweza maliza mayai kabisa kizazi kikapotea sasa ndo maana tutataka samaki wazae pale wale ambao wanatoka kwa ile eneo wavuvi wanaweza vua What are some of the challenges the community reef rangers face? Mfanya awareness lakini kuna hata ukafanya awareness kuna wale ambao ile awareness haijawafikia vizuri wao wanajaribu kungangana wanaona samaki wako wengi wanajaribu kungangana kutaka kupata wale samaki. Sasa changamoto yetu kubwa ni ile tunapambana na wavuvi wasiingie kuvua ile maeneo. Changamoto nyingine ni ile climate change. Climate change kama mfano wa ile El Nino ambayo imepita ile mvua ikinyesha inachukua uchafu wa kila mahali unashukia baharini. Sasa sisi tunasafisha na bado uchafu unaingia kwa zile koro ndogo ndogo. Sasa changamoto ambayo tunapata ni kusafisha kila mara. Kuna ile channel kubwa ambayo poti walikuwa wanatimba ili kukue deep. Ule mchanga ambao walikuwa wanatoa pale unasambarizika kila mahali mpaka unafika kwa maeneo ya hizi koro zetu. Sasa wakati mchanga ukija ukiingia kwa hii koro ambayo tayari tumeipanda sasa obvious inaharibu ile koro inafanya yani ipungue ile kasi ya kukua na hata pia inasababisha mpaka kufa pia ule mchanga ukiwa unatembea kwa ile channel ni vumbi vumbi obvious maji itakuwa hayaonyeshi vizuri sasa ile jua kama haitapiga vizuri kwa ile koro koro itasababisha i bleach na kufa In July last year the success of Pate Shangai Shakani and Shangarubu inspired the Kiunga Community Wildlife Association Kikoa located about 30 kilometers northeast of Pate Island to restore at least 0.5 hectares of coral garden in an area set aside by the village elders for snorkeling activities. Traditionally Kikoa is located at the Kiunga Marine National Reserve. Kiunga lies in the Bajun Archipelago at the northern extreme of the Kenyan coast at the border with Somalia. It gained protection status in 1979 and is co-managed by the Kenya Wildlife Services (KWS) and local communities. Kiunga is an important nesting area for green and hawksbill turtles. Also, migratory birds, dugongs, and whales frequent the area. But the coral reefs in this area have a lower species diversity than those found in the Kenyan South Coast along the Vanga Malindi area. An annual upwelling event majorly impacts the coral diversity. Here. We call it South and East uh, Coastal Current, flowing from all the way from uh, Mozambique, Tanzania, and then goes to Kenya. And then there's another current, major current that flows from Somali. Uh, so they normally meet around uh, June or July. So when they meet, these two currents, they converge. When they converge, the currents now drift towards offshore. So what happens to this vacuum that is left? That water deep inside there comes and occupies this 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 vacuum that has been created and that water is very cold because it's coming over 200 meters 200 down 300,000 meters down there so when it comes up that's what we now we call upwelling cold rich water is now coming to the surface okay and then when it comes to the surface now it starts spreading to these areas to these coral reef areas So that kind of scenario happening on a yearly basis will deter, of course diminishes the, the the productivity of the corals Beyond the natural phenomena impacting the coral reef structures at Kiunga Pata area, the Kiunga LMMA is located a few minutes to Mlangoa Channel, an open sea opening as you head to Somalia. The ocean current here at times gets very high, breaking the fragile corals especially during the rainy season. What are some of the challenges protecting the national reserve? Changamoto sana tunapata tunapata na watu kutoka nje so hapa kuna watu ambao huja kutoka area za nje hapa hapa la county wa vuvu wa kutumia masenet kwa wingi wanakuja sana nyingine wanafanya za shughuli zao na huwa ni wakorofi kiasi kwa kiasi fulani ya tumewahi kushika ingawaje hatujawe kushtaki sababu tunaangalia pia vile hali ya kijamii lakini tumewahi kuchukua ile mitego wanatumia 
kwambia kama hii sasa hii itakuwa ni ujumbe unafika kwa wale wengine ambao wengine walikuwa na nia ya na wao pia wajiwafanye ama ikibidi zaidi kama wamekuwa jeuri ni kuweka kwenye sheria With the Kiunga Marine National Reserve located next to Boni and Dondori National Reserves, the community rangers and KWS are tasked at not only protecting the LMME areas but also the national reserves. But with only four community rangers and KWS team, lack of manpower and effective equipment hampers patrols especially on the rough open sea. Kuongezewa vijana wa kikazi pengine ya na kuwa na vyombo vya kazi kama boti ambazo zimekuwa bora kidogo kwa sababu kwa kusema kweli zile tuko nazo saa hii zimekuwa mzee yeah, kwa hiyo siweza kuaminika sana kwa sababu ni mashine ambayo time yote inaweza kukatalia njiani kiwa ni wakati ule kidogo bahari imekuwa na nguvu na wewe nataka wewe uko na chombo ambacho kiko na nguvu kwa sababu utakuta mara nyingi wale wavuvi hawajali wanatoka tu wakati wote however three months ago the challenges notwithstanding kikoa replicated the pmcc coral rehabilitation effort with the help and training from community coral restoration experts such as sunny nrt coast tnc and chemframe sunny had been inspired to train other locals having received training earlier from the wasini beach management unit a 600 member group which had pioneered rehabilitating corals along the kenya's shimoni vanga seascape bordering tanzania to manage their conservation efforts and NRT Coast has trained both the PMCC and Kikoa on leadership and financial management, effective governance and sustainable use of marine resources. Community rangers have been trained with partnership with KWS on proper management and protection of wildlife and marine resources, while the reef rangers have been trained on scuba diving. Before the training, the community would free dive to transplant, monitor and maintain the corals. Yaani mwanzo zile kwenda kukata zile coral yani zenyewe ukitumia hivi hivi tu snook na glass na zile slippers za miguu unatuka long time masaa mingi yani utakata moja upande tena juu yani natukua long time sana yani kufanya shughuli pengine ni kitu ambao utafanya kwa one hour unatuka more than 5 hours ama 6 hours coral ni kiumbe hai yani ukicholesha sana mara moja zaweza zikakufa ukaenda kupeleka kwenye nasari one month ama two months ukiangala coral lazima coral zimekufa lakini ukitumia mtungi yani una dive faster unakata na maliza unapanda speedboat unaenda unaenda kwenye nasari ukifika pia kwenye nasari unaweza kuzipanda vizuri kwa makinifu bila kukatika bila yani kufanyika chochote Oginda says the training aims at ensuring that once the pile of project comes to an end these communities can still run the project on their own What uh, scientists know is what the community knows but to their uh, level of understanding that then there is sustainability So once the project cycle is over this project does not come to an end it it continues that the community are able to continue the project and even replicate the project on their own it's been three months since kikoa built cement blocks and transplanted coral fragments the communities has had successes before with tato conservation resulting in tourism revenue supporting each needy child with at least 20000 kenya shillings in bursaries they are optimistic that the coral conservation will not only increase fisheries here but also tatos visiting this area hence an increased tourism levies as well as fish reproduction for their market nategemea sana watalii na hapo mahali kuanzia miaka nyuma ilikuwa wazee wetu wanaitumia kama watalii wanakuja kwa snorkeling wana watalii vile vile wanakuja kulisha kasa chakula hapo ni malipo ambayo ni kasa wako wengi sana itakuwa kuna kipato fulani tunapata ambao utakuwa kinaingia kwa jamii ambao vile vile hiyo pesa itakuwa inasaidia jamii kwa kujisaidia katika maisha na vile vile hiyo pesa itakuwa inasaidia jamii pia katika uma, upande wa basari tunatarajia kwa ya, ya coral itaengeza mapato zaidi sana kwa sababu kupitia ongezeko la samaki vile vile pia kulingana na hii mambo ya coral restoration yenye tumefanya leo mazingira yenyewe vile vile imekaa pia itazidi kuvutia kasa hapo mahali so tunatarajia kwamba watalii watazidi kuongezeka na pia kipato kitakuwa cha juu zaidi as for the pmcc they are already charging conservation fee of 2000 shillings per local adult visiting their lmma and 5000 shillings for a foreigner
Revenues collected are shared annually among the three villages. For the Shangarubu village, their revenues are going into paying madrasa teachers. But the PMCC is planning with NRT to mobilize resources to acquire a grass bottom boat for tourism activities on the LMMA to fully benefit from the restoration efforts. But I asked Joshua, what are the long term fruits of reef restoration the communities should see? For you to see the fruits of reef restoration, you need about 10 years to see the big impact. Already we see changes in Pate. It's booming, it's teeming with life because Pate has been, uh, the project has been running for a couple of years now. And yeah, so uh, those are benefits, the conservation benefits. They do not always convert to money. The money is important, but then think of a healthy ecosystem, what it gives you. Uh, sometimes we overlook that and we don't see uh, uh, ecosystem services as benefits. We're keen on getting a, a market for, for the fish that comes from within the, the, the communities. We've also improved the cold uh, storage facilities, the cold chain, where we've uh, tried to reduce post-harvest losses. Maura says, yes, the restoration effort is on a small scale, but he says its long-term ripple effects makes it a move to the right direction. When you restore a small area, you bring corals back to that particular small area. What you will realize is after one year, the ripples that will happen, is it will not only be felt at, in that small area. The fish, the corals will move out. If the corals mature, they will do what we call mass spawning. Those eggs that the corals spawn, those fish that have been there when they mature, when they breed, it's not that they're going to remain at that particular area that we have restored. Actually, they will be washed, they will be carried by the current, they will be taken somewhere else. So the idea is like, we are rehabilitating a small area, but the impact is spinning over to other nearby areas. To me, I think it's, it's making a significant contribution. A small step, but we are moving in the right direction. Special thanks to Joshua Oginda for filming the Pate and Kiunga underwater videos. For more Africa-centered climate and environmental stories, please visit our website.